Hey there, I have a quick thought for you. I was thinking today about the germ theory given the whole coronavirus and washing our hands and distancing our proximity with people. I thought this would be an interesting story for you. And before I get into the germ theory, and no, this is not about Louis Pasteur, it's an interesting story that many people don't know about that I think you might find interesting. But before we go there, I just wanted to let you know that if you haven't read or you don't own a copy of If You Think You Can, I encourage you to get your own copy. And we've made it really easy for you. We have lowered the price of this book on Amazon and on Apple. The digital version of this book, If You Think You Can, currently is $1. And it'll be $1 for the next 72 hours. So pay attention to the date this video was posted and you can get a copy of this book for $1. But in the book, before I get into the germ theory, let me just read this to kind of set up my message really quick. I write in the book, it's easy to find reasons why things won't work. The world is full of rationales for why you can't be great. Achievers, however, find the reasons why things will work. For centuries, people commonly believed the earth was at the center of the universe and that the sun revolved around it. Although many great minds disputed this belief, Galileo was the first to prove it false. To do so, he took the leader's of that time to the Tower of San Marco. And with his newly perfected telescope, he showed them his discovery. They, keep this in mind, were threatened by this knowledge because it contradicted their strongly held beliefs. So they became angry and even tortured Galileo to get him to retract his position. Eventually, in February 1633, he did just that. Out of fear for his life, he retracted his beliefs. Well, let me tell you something. This is also true. So that was 1633. But if I take you back to 1841, there's a similar story. You see, Louis Pasteur is kind of known as the person who coined the germ theory, but there were some great leaders and thought leaders back in the time that led up to Louis Pasteur. I don't know if you recognize the name Ignaz Semmelweis. Does that ring a bell? Ignaz Semmelweis was a a boss, if you will, a chief resident of many hospitals in Hungary. And um, he was well known, he was well respected, and he noticed a pattern. He said, throughout the city, we had two different types of clinics. We had one clinic where we would teach medical students, and as part of those clinics, we would work with cadavers, so we would do autopsies. But then we would also have a clinic where we would have midwives. And there, there would be no cadavers, so no uh, autopsies or anything. So he noticed a difference between the two. In clinic number one, there was a mortality rate of 10%. That means 10% of anybody that went in there likely came out, attracted a fever called purpural fever, and 10% of them died. In the midwife clinic, there was only a 4% mortality rate. He was curious about that. And so he started to do things in all the hospitals that he was over. He would have people uh, keep the temperature at a different level and crowd sizes in the, in the different departments and rooms at a certain level and so forth. But whatever he tried wouldn't work. Until one day, his good friend and one of the professors that he worked with, Jacob Kalishka, happened to be working with a cadaver. He was doing an autopsy when he accidentally poked his finger and he kept working with it, didn't think much about it. And a few days later, he came down with purpural fever. And it was only a few days later that he passed away. Well, Ignaz got thinking about that and thought, wait a minute, my friend Jacob was healthy before he pricked his finger. So then it dawned on him that maybe 
on the scalpel that he used, there is something called a cadaver particle that got transferred from that dead body to his body and eventually got him sick. So he came out with this theory of cadaver particles. And so as he thought about it, he thought, you know what, I think what we should do is begin washing our instruments, our medical instruments, and we should be washing our hands, right? Sound familiar? Washing our hands with a chlorinated lime solution. Well, at the time, the leaders of the world and in the medical world uh, thought that his ideas were false. There was nothing to back them up. They didn't believe, but he went out and actually doubled down on it. He wrote a book on it. He started giving little seminars in the community and in the city and at other medical institutions to the point it created a frenzy. And people doubted this discovery, that this was actually going to help. But here's one thing that happened. When his particular hospitals started washing the instruments and started washing their hands with this chlorine lime solution, guess what? The mortality went below 1%. So even though there was evidence that less people were dying because of the strong held beliefs at the time that it didn't matter whether you washed the instruments or washed your hands because no one knew of the germ theory at that point, they didn't believe it. In fact, as he was out teaching this concept and encouraging people to wash their instruments, they thought that the leaders at the time thought that he had gone crazy. Even his wife deemed him insane to the point that they sent him to a mental institution and it was in there after he got beaten by the guards, he attracted, contracted a fever and he died 14 days later. Isn't that an amazing story? And it was 30 years later that Louis Pasteur took some of that research and coined the phrase, the germ theory. But really, Ignaz Semmelweis was known as a pioneer of the antiseptic procedures of the time. And henceforth, how important it is that we wash our hands, that we keep our proximity to other people at a distance because of particles of the sickness, particles of the, let's say for this example, the coronavirus, particles of that. If it touches you or gets around you, then you run the risk of contracting that particular virus. So just because our heightened awareness is around germs and is around viruses and so forth, I thought it'd be interesting to share this story with you about Ignaz Semmelweis, because we are so blessed by some of these great thinkers of the past, even though many of the leaders at the time didn't believe them. Oh, how we stand on the shoulders of other great thinkers. And so I just want to say to the first responders, to the medical community out there, um, a lot of demands are going to be put on you. And I just want to express my appreciation for you and for your studies and for your research. And, and, and I just want to say, you're doing a powerful work and my heart goes out to you and your families and all the time that you're gonna be spending helping many people in the world, particularly where I live in America. Um, you're gonna be helping a lot of people and our heart goes out to you and we give you thanks for all your efforts. All right, I hope that was an interesting story that might be useful to you, all right? The beginning of the germ theory. All right, go out there believe in possibilities, and unleash your greatness within.